All right. So uh, last week I did a, uh, a tapered ball corner fillet in Rhino with X nerves, and um, I wanted to try it in SolidWorks as well. It's actually not super easy because the the fillet was tapered. We started here with a distance between rails of five, and then we tapered it down to uh, two point five, which you can't do with the variable radius fillet. So we're going to have to uh, be a little creative. And I already threw this in. This is just a basic. Um, uh, uh, face fill it with cord with curvature continuum. It does a good job actually um, But we're gonna get rid of this and we're gonna use some um, TW3D and x features to build this whole thing. So uh, Let's get into it. So the first thing You know if we want to have a tapered fillet here if we use the variable radius fillet we can select these guys um, And we can go here from 5 to 2.5, uh, but you you don't get a very good transition through here with this way and and adjusting these you I it's very difficult to find like the correct values. You never really get a good result. So we're going to try something uh, different. And so first I'm going to do a, uh, a tube. And that is this guy and I want it to go in the different direction in that direction. And we want this to be a linear taper and we're going to start at 5 and we're going to end at 2.5. We preview that. So now we have uh, a surface that goes through this uh, uh, corner here. So we're going to accept that. And it, it doesn't always work out, but if you're really getting close to these edges, you can usually trim with this thing like right away. So let's see if we can trim. Uh, use this as a trim tool, and in this case, keep selections is the easiest. Hide that. So now we have this, and this is a really tight curve. We're going to open that up and give a little more room for this transition to happen here in uh, in this corner. And the I'm going to put some blend curves in here, um, and we can probably use two curves here. I'm going to use curvature and I'm going to go from there to there and you can see that it's closed but it's just a little bit different um, so I'm going to accept that turn on my curves put another one in the bottom from there to there and G3 accept that and so now I can delete this guy and I have these two curves. Um, and then I need some curves here, here, and here, and here. These are easy. Uh, we can just put these in in the same way. Uh, select this guy, select that guy, keep that, accept. Do that again. Two curves, this guy, this guy and accept and so now these are tougher because what i want is i want this uh i want to follow this curve into and extend that out in this direction and i think the best way that i found is to insert a 3d sketch and then convert this and then you can extend that curve out um, so we do that and then we should be able to project that curve uh, sketch onto face. We're going to use this sketch. The projection direction in this case is the right plane, and I want to put it onto that surface. So now I have a curve uh, that is uh, curvature continuous with this projected on this surface. We're going to do another one 3D sketch, convert that, go up. Uh, and you may have to create some custom planes uh, if you want to do this. Uh, project that onto projection. Direction in this case is the front, and we want to project that onto here. Okay, so now I have two curves that will allow me to put some blend curves in between these guys that are uh, not planar, but they have a really natural flow. So, do two more starting curve, ending curve. Except two curves, starting curve, ending curve, and except. 
Now, this is not a very good transition here. We have this really smooth transition through here, and this is basically a, a, a corner that's too tight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some uh, surfaces that will allow me to uh, untrim this, trim it back, and then blend in between it. Um, so let's do that. Um, I'm going to create some fence surfaces. And a fence surface is, can be normal to the surface. I don't need much. One millimeter either way is probably good enough. There we go. So that's one. It's a fence surface or a ruled surface. Uh, I think in GW 3D it's called a fence surface, but I think in some cases it's called a uh, a ruled surface. Select that curve, select that edge. Okay. Um, and I will need to extend these out a little bit because they uh, probably are not going to uh, uh, trim the edges otherwise. So extend that out. One millimeter is enough. Extend this out. One millimeter is enough. Okay. So now I go to my surface fence, show that. So now I can use these fence surfaces to trim this back. Trim, we're gonna do a mutual trim between that guy, that guy, and that guy. And in this case, we wanna remove that one, okay? Tap that, we can hide that, hide that. And so now I can put a blend surface in between here that is G3 continuous between this edge and this edge. So again, with GW3D, uh, here's my starting edge. I'm going to use the surface for my tangency, and we're going to go G3, end edge, this guy, same thing, surface, that guy, and we can leave it to, we're going to go G3, preview that. And so you'll see that we have this really smooth transition that lops off some of that really tight curvature here. That's what I want. Tap that. Um, I'm going to stitch those together really quick. Yep. yep. And so now, in some cases, this edge will not extend far enough and you will get sliver edges here, which will cause a problem. So the best thing to do here is to untrim the original edge. So now we're going back to a sharp edge essentially, and then use this whole surface because now we know that we're extending beyond the trim surface. So now if we trim, standard here, use that, and we're going to remove uh, thickness. It is not knit. That's weird. Created a copy. Let's hide these. That should work. Standard trim tool, remove that guy. Accept. Okay. And so now we're left with uh, a setup where we have four uh, four sided surface patches. And then with X NURMS, we can create really nice organized uh, curvature continuous surfaces here. Um, and so let's do that next. So go to X NURBS. We want curvature continuous, show preview. We want optimize for quad, uh, flatness control. The quality control, I usually leave this in the middle. Like I said with uh, Rhino, I don't see much of a difference. But with flatness control, I found that all the way to the right, especially if you're doing these rounds, gives you the best result. If you move this down, you just get like a flat area in through here, which is not what we want. So select this edge, select that edge, and a bump automatically to position. So now with the preview on, you can actually see that uh, if I change that, you get this flatter surface, and if I bump that up, um, I get a better continuity through here. In this case, it doesn't make much of a difference, but you can play with it too. You can always create the surface, evaluate, and then go back and readjust the sliders um, uh, if you have to. So accept that, and now we just go through the motions of uh, filling in everything. Curvature, curvature, same settings, show preview. Except, uh, I think that one's a little bit 
uh, optimized for Qualcomm. I didn't. I, it looked like it was maybe off. Character. This guy. This guy. That guy. And that guy. Share preview. You know, and here we have a little bit of tightness in here. There, the, these lines are uh, show the control points, so we have some uh, tightness in the control points. So actually, in this case, I think the quality control here is the best setting because uh, it spaces these control points out a little bit further. So that'll give us a little more lead in on this uh, surface. And then the final one, this guy, we want curvature all around. So one, two, three, four. And you can already see that we have really nice flow through here because these will represent the uh, control points or the ISO curve. You, unfortunately, in SOLIDWORKS, you can't see that easily. But GW3D has a tool that allows you to um, see the uh, control point structure. And even though this is a pretty dense uh, surface, you can see that the control points are really nicely distributed. And if you have these really nicely distributed control points, you basically don't have like unwanted wobbles and, and weirdness going on. Um, we can't individually adjust the control points, but if you see, if you do a check with uh, GW3D and you see you see that you have these control points that are really well and evenly spaced and, and have nice flow to them, then you're pretty much guaranteed to have um, a good surface as well. And so that's what it looks like when it's built. And then if we put a, a zebra stripe on it, here you can see with the zebra stripes on that we have this really nice flow through here, um, pretty much uninterrupted. Um, this is pretty good, and this is actually not, it may look like a really simple model, but this is not that easy to do, actually. I encourage you to try it and try to get the same result. Uh, I think you'll find that without these uh, extra tools that I'm using, uh, get achieving the same result may not be uh, as easy. Uh, I'm sure it's possible, uh, and with the vertical stripes, this I love. You have these stripes that are really nicely blended in and then they go around the corner and you have this really nice um, is this 100 percent perfect cur curvature continuous no it's not 100 percent, but is it really really close uh, i think it is um, so with that said um, here's how you model the tapered ball corner uh, in solidworks with the use of gw3d and uh, x nerves and as always happy modeling